second slide, I think, and then we look at the key strategic goals uh, that have been developed by the Housing Department of Education, which is the official training arm of the GDE we have adopted. And thirdly, I look at our partnership with the ETDP CETA, uh, and then look at the Houting Primary Literacy and Languages and, and Mathematics Strategy, just to give you a brief background, which is the one that actually uh, I think brought us here in the sense that we're looking at mathematics education. And then fourthly, fifthly, I look at the institutionalization of the very same strategy. Uh, because what we are looking at is people look, focus more on intervention in, in the schools, but then those are um, temporary in nature. But then what do you do to make that sustainable? What do you do to make that much more reliable? Then it is important, therefore, to institutionalize these interventions that we are looking at. And finally, I'm also going to touch on the maths project that we are currently implementing with um, some of the schools that are in our area. Right, first let us look at the policy framework. Um, our activities as Matthew Bonire are um, find their life in the integrated strategic planning framework for teacher education and development in South Africa. This is a national uh, framework that all teacher development is premised on. All of the provinces follow this particular framework in terms of teacher development. But we as, how, as the Housing um, Department of Education, because Matthew Goniwe is a part of that, we're looking at um, our own strategy, which we call the Teacher uh, Professional Development Strategy, which has got four pillars. The first pillar that we're looking at is pre-service training. It's important that for us to have good quality teachers, we need to look at pre-service training, but also to look at in-service training as well, because you find anecdotes of poor training in teachers and all that. So we need to redress that poor training that may have happened in the past. But also thirdly, and very important, we're also looking at communities of practice. Communities of practice are very important because here we are able to develop reflective teachers. We are able to develop teachers that share good practice. We are able to develop teachers that look back at their own practice and see what is it that they are doing in order to get an impact in their practice. And fourthly, we're looking at teacher development centers. The TDCs are very important because that is where they meet. The communities of practice actually get their lives in the teacher development centers because that is where they meet after school, that is where they share their good practice. So as the Houghton Department of, of Education, we're looking at those four pillars which are very, very important to us. But not only do we look at that, we also look at CAPS. I think Gerard will touch a bit on that. Uh, the curriculum and assessment policy statement, but we're also looking at the secondary schools improvement program, which is the SIP. Um, the, the program actually focuses on 330 high schools that are un underperforming in the Houghton province. And these teachers then are taken through this particular program. Next, then we look at the inclusive education strategy. Very often, our um, <coughs> learners with special educational needs are left behind. And the mainstream schools do not address their needs adequately. So it is important, therefore, that we need to have a strategy that actually looks at addressing the needs of those learners that have got special needs. And then there is the MST strategy that we also follow uh, in collaboration with Saibono. And then lastly, we've got a uh, second last, we've got early childhood development strategy where we're looking at um, learners from zero to six that are able then to go into the schooling system in order to be able to make an impact in their learning. So the others we just look at, but let me move to the next to try and cover time. As Matthew Goni, we're looking at um, key strategic goals that are able to ensure our influence. The first one that we're looking at there 
is ensuring that Gauteng has got effective schools and learning institutions. Secondly, the GDU head office and districts provide relevant and coordinated and effective support. For schools to be effective, schools need to be supported. The third one is um, enabling young people to make the transition from school into the world of work. And then fourthly, partnerships such as these ones are very important for GDP. Strengthen partnerships with all stakeholders <coughs> in order to make education a societal priority. But maybe we need to look at then how did we come here together with the uh, ETDP CETA. The ETDP CETA has signed this MOU with the GDE to collaborate on critical and strategic areas. Therefore, because Matthew Gonewe is a training arm and the implementing arm of the GDE, then it becomes a partner to in this. And then one such area is the development and strengthening of the MST skills need that we, that we want to develop as a community. So that is basically then what we're talking about. But then the, the GPLMS is a very important arm of this particular project, which was launched by uh, the MEC in 2010, which looked or focused on 792 underserved <coughs> schools in the Kaohsiung province. And one would ask the question, what do you mean by underperforming schools? All the schools that scored below 80% in their 2000, 2009 uh, results were regarded as underperforming. Now, it was initially a language intervention program, which was called the GPLS, the Houting Primary Language Strategy. And then the math component was added in 2011, it became GPLMS. And then the project life is up to next year, 2014. Uh, because then thereafter it's a five-year project and then we will be looking at other interventions. But um, in this particular project, the coaches and the mentors are assigned to the schools and they support the teachers in the schools. Okay, with the institutionalization of the GPLMS, um, it is necessary to institutionalize it because it's not a financially viable intervention to have education being run on interventions throughout. So therefore it is important to use the work that is already done by um, the GPLMS project in order to embed it in the schools. Firstly, how do we do it? It is through the establishment or the formation of language and mathematics reference groups to look into the content and package it into the different qualifications. So that is a long-term objective of uh, the institutionalization process. But the short-term project or inter, uh, uh, objective is to ensure that this content is packaged into programs that will be <coughs> approved by SAIS. And once SAIS has approved them, then the teachers who participate in those programs will um, sort of accumulate points. And the point system is actually beginning in 2014, and SAIS will be overlooking that particular pro process. Still continuing, uh, the programs that uh, SAIS will endorse will then articulate into qualifications. And then the teachers who are in the system accumulate those CPDT points that are spoken about, the continuous professional teacher development points, and then the programs also form part of the induction program of newly appointed teachers. When a teacher is appointed in the school, then they be taken through that particular program. But that does not only look at the teachers, but also the SMTs and subject advisors as well, who need to be trained um, as well as to, to enable them to 
support the schools, the teachers that are in their, uh, in their schools. So that is the process of institutionalizing um, GPLMS. And then we also have got um, a maths project that we're implementing at, at Metrigo um, which looks at initiating and implementing a maths intervention for teachers who are in the grade four to seven classes in Gauteng. And the major thing that we're looking at here is um, to look at three interrelated components that will assist the implementation of this project. First is the SBS uh, school-based support by instructional improvement coaches. So there will be coaches who go into the school and assist the teachers uh, in terms of the areas where they lack in, in the teaching of maths. Secondly, the there is discussion with the HEIs to look at formal accredited training on selected maths topics in the intermediate phase and address the three things that we can be looking at content, pedagogy and knowledge and lastly to develop a professional growth instrument which will measure how teachers perform in the maths uh, subject and the teaching thereof.